The amount of things that you need for a baby, very minimal. I remember stressing, our baby does not have a blanket. Now she has like 17 blankets. Hey guys, my name is Shayla. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, I make videos about pregnancy. I make videos about motherhood. Today I'm gonna talk about my top five mom regrets. And I don't wanna say regrets. I feel like your first child, you're just learning. Your second child, you're gonna do it differently. And I'm gonna refer to my second child throughout this entire video. I'm not pregnant. I'm gonna talk about the things that I'm gonna change and the things that I'm gonna do the exact same. Let's get started. Thing number one is sleep. Mom sleep and baby sleep. Baby sleep. I did a whole video on this. We did the sleep training and we totally failed. We hated it. Not our jam. But we did learn a few really important things like sleep EQs and wake windows. I asked on Instagram, what are your mom regrets? Some people are like, I wish I wouldn't have followed the wake windows. And others are like, I wish I would have followed the wake windows. For me, I didn't even know what they were. She would just be sleeping, oh cool, and then she'd wake up, not neat. So now that I know that there's like sleepy cues and wake windows, maybe number two, I'll be like, oh, she's showing sleepy cues. I just know what they are now. So if you have no idea what they are, look them up because they can be helpful. But if they're not helpful, let it go. A lot of the information that I got, I was like, I can't, I can't, too stressful. Had to let it go. Mom sleep. Everyone's like, mm, sleep when your baby sleeps. Okay, then when am I gonna do the laundry or feed myself or shower or do dishes, any, pick up, do anything? When am I gonna do anything? I hear you, but also you really do need to sleep when your baby sleeps because some babies, they're awake during all the day and then they're asleep during all the night, opposite. They're awake all day and they're asleep all night, opposite. They're awake all night and asleep all day. I'm somebody that's like, I don't need a lot of sleep. I can just power through, which is true. I'm, I'm pretty good at not a lot of sleep until it compounds. You're like not functioning at a normal human level. You've got hormones already just raging through you. Then you add some sleep deprivation. Then you add a husband that can't breastfeed the baby and it's just like a recipe for disaster. So you really do need to sleep when your baby sleeps. Nobody really expects anything out of you for like the first four to six weeks. So maybe pick like the one thing. Choose the dishes and make sure that those dishes are done. You look up like how to sleep better and it's like don't do screen time before bed. However, my daughter is nine months old and the only time that I have to work. At night, I get nice long sleep stretches. Well, sorry. Google. So this video is sponsored by a computer glasses company called Felix Grey. I've used Felix Grey's for years and to be honest when I first heard about them I thought that it was total BS. Okay, there's just blue light and then I can't even... No. I am a hardcore believer of these things. They've got a few different pairs. They've got prescription pair, they've got sunglasses, they've got the computer glasses that look like this that you can wear during the day and then they have nighttime ones that look like this. And these are a little bit more yellow, which is why they call them nighttime ones, so they're like, you don't have to wear these to work. And I'm telling you, I know you might not believe me, and that's fine. Dude, is there a glare? I almost thought about asking them for like one spelt lenses so I could make this video. <laughs> no eye strain, no headaches. Anytime I get on my computer or if we watch movies at night, honestly, I think these are so cute that I just wear them all the time. My sister and Seth used to be, aren't those your computer glasses? As I'm like driving down the road. Yeah, but they're cute, so whatever. I can't recommend them enough. These are Robelling, and these are Lovelace, so. I nurse to sleep every single time, which I love, but it also limits the things that I can do. I have to be here every couple of hours so that I can nurse her back to sleep for her nap or to go to bed or whatever. So the second thing is the bottle. I waited six weeks to introduce a bottle. Six weeks of just breastfeeding, and then she was like, <laughs> I don't want that. She won't take a bottle now. And people are like, you need to leave the house for like six hours. I'm like, I don't, no, it's COVID. Like no one's just hanging out at my house for six hours while I go do something. We're still working on the bottle thing. She's drinking out of an open cup now. So maybe I'll just put some breast milk in an open cup. But I would introduce a bottle sooner. Once you've got breastfeeding down, start trying to bottle once a day. And it's inconvenient. The boob is so much easier and that's why I didn't really do it. But now it's really inconvenient that she won't ever take a bottle. There's something called a bottle box that you can buy with like the popular brands so you can try out the different nipples. <sighs> the whole thing is process, which leads me to the next thing, stuff. The amount of things that you need for a baby, very minimal. I remember stressing, our baby does not have a blanket. Now she has like 17 blankets. You just don't need that much stuff for them. Especially like the first couple weeks, it's all about you, ma. You gotta get fixed, you gotta get healed. I have a whole video on the prep after baby, not even the prep, the recovery process. There's like layers of your pad of like numbing. Go check out that video if you need to. But for baby, I didn't ask for clothes because people find the cutest clothes and get her the clothes all the time. Plus, COVID kids are just wearing onesie pajamas all day, 
every day. I have one nice outfit in like each age group. So when we go to like Target or Christmas or something, <laughs> she wears this presentable outfit. So I would ask for gift cards or just cash. We bought a Mamaroo. She hated the Mamaroo. So we had to buy the swing. Some babies like the bounce. And so these are all over Facebook Marketplace because people get them for their baby registry and then they are done with them and they only last a couple of months. So if you could just get cash, I know that's kind of tacky, but like, it would just be so much better. I wish I knew that there were non-toxic car seats. There's like flame retardants and all sorts of stuff that are on car seats. I have a blog post about this with the five brands in the US. I wish I had known that so that I could have gotten her an infant car seat that was non-toxic. So she's almost out of that and now we're gonna get the convertible that's gonna be non-toxic. So if you didn't know, now you know. You also might go down a rabbit hole of everything in your house that's toxic. Everything is, so. If you already have anxiety, maybe just don't even look at it. The best gift that you can get for a new mom is a DoorDash gift card. Someone sent it to us in the hospital. We got a nice meal, DoorDash to the hospital. For like the first week after she was born, I got to pick whatever I want. Got just a delivery system that can pick up food from everywhere. Which brings me to meals. If you don't get any gift cards, you wanna make sure that you have meals prepped. We immediately got on like a food service system that sent us like seven pre-made meals. There's too much sodium in them, so I stopped doing that. You can also make crock pot meals. You and your family can make these meals while you're pregnant and put them in the freezer so that when you're ready, you just throw it in the crock pot and you've got a meal. Because feeding yourself is the last thing on your mind, but you have to because you're feeding someone else. And then I would take more photos. Like, they do little things. Right now she's waving or she used to like make little gremlin noises and I have those on videos and I just love looking back at them. And ask your partner to take photos of you. It's awkward and you really don't feel that cute. Boobs are leaking and you haven't showered and I'm like, can you take a picture of me? You look back at it and you're like, oh, that was a memory, I like that. Also, have a arsenal of moms in your toolbox. You want like modern mom, why wouldn't you take an epidural if it is offered to the hippie mom? No, you just need some laughing gas and some hypno babies. The mom who breastfeeds until she's four, she'll tell you everything you wanna know about breast milk, about how it's different at night than it is during the day, how it can cure cradle cap and clog milk ducts. You want the relaxed mom. Best time to drink wine is while you're breastfeeding. It's not gonna get to them while they're breastfeeding and then you've got a lot of time until the next breastfeeding for it to get out of your system. And then the mom with multiples, either twins or like multiple children. Because on your first kid you want to wrap them in bubble wrap so that they can't get hurt ever. And then they have to like go out into the world and you're just like, oh my god. So you need that mom that's like, trust your baby. But then you want to find the mom, I want to be like that mom. That's the mom that you ask for advice from. That one. Those are all of my regrets, and I hate saying regrets because like I said, it's just learning lessons. It's not necessarily something that I'm like dwelling over, but it's like, eh, yeah, I'll probably do that different next time. So the things that I did that I am so glad that I did, starting with pregnancy. One, I did hypno babies. There's a course that tells you all about how labor's gonna go and different options that you have. Then there's these things that you listen to to like teach yourself to relax during labor. You let your body relax, and you let it do its thing, and you let that baby Come on out, I will do that again. I will also do my workouts. I did Expecting and Empowered, love them. It's a physical therapist and a nurse and they tell you exactly what you need to do. Workouts specific to each week of your pregnancy and then postpartum. It's pelvic floor exercises. I think that's why I pushed for so short and I think that's how I recovered postpartum. The Haka. The Haka is a silicone breast pump that sucks chins onto your boobs. So while you're feeding on this side, it's catching all the letdown on this side and it helps you with your Supply, I had an oversupply. I filled an entire freezer with milk. I've never used a breast pump and my baby wouldn't take a bottle. So then I donated all of that milk. You want to set up your bathroom. Remember how I told you there's like the pad and the numbing and the witch hazel? Go to that video, go to that blog, buy all of those things, make yourself a cute little basket in your bathroom and have it ready. As you're packing your hospital bag, get this thing ready for when you come home. I just wear these for the rest of the video. The glare was the only thing I was worried about. I am so glad that I started breastfeeding the minute she was born. We did extended cord clamping, delayed cord clamping. Your boob releases this smell that smells like amniotic fluid, so your baby goes right to it. She latched. I will absolutely talk to a lactation consultant in the hospital. She told me everything that I could possibly need to know. I didn't remember half of it. The pediatrician was also a lactation consultant and I showed her how she was latching right there. When I first had her, one of the nurses looked me in the face and was like, if you wanna breastfeed, 
do not quit for the first two weeks. And that's what you need to hear because it's so hard. Talk to a lactation consultant, especially if it's painful, because it can be, there can be lip ties, tongue ties, there's a lot. I'm glad that we did tummy time. She was always on the floor. She was only in a swing if we were working out. Otherwise she was on her back or on her tummy or on her side. She didn't have many clothes on. I'd keep her in her diaper so it wasn't restricting. And she like is super alert and she's nine and nine months and she's standing on her own. She's very, very, very mobile. I don't know that tummy time did that. I think that's dependent of your child. But lastly, we got a Love Every box subscription. I'm actually an ambassador for Love Every, but I would pay for it. It's like 40 bucks every month, and then every other month you get a box that comes to your house with all of these toys that are perfect for where they are developmentally. Sometimes I get these boxes and she can't figure out what to do with them, and then a month she's doing all the things that she's supposed to do. And it comes with this little booklet. Oh, this item is for to teach them this, and how to play with your kids to help them developmentally. It's incredible. I love it. I'm like super geeked about Love Every. And we do cloth diapering and elimination communication, which potty training your infant. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but this this girl, every morning when she wakes up from her sleep, she pees on the toilet. It's insane. It took a while to get there. For a while, I was like, I'm not doing this. This is too much, but it's pretty great. And then cloth diapering, obviously, just to like save the world and stuff. Once you figure out how to do it, it's really easy. So baby number two, done and done. I have a video on both of those things. That's it. That's, that's all of it. Those are all my regrets all my lessons learned, and all of the things that I will do exactly the same. The one piece of advice that I have for you, something is only a problem if it's not working for you. If it's working, but people are like, mm, you don't wanna do that, forget that. That's like the sleep training stuff. Do I nurse to sleep every time? Yeah. Is it kind of inconvenient? Mm-hmm. Do I care? No. If it's not a problem for you, it's not a problem. I support you, ma. I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Mwah. Bye.